So we've seen our supercomputers shrink down from the size of buildings into devices we wear inside of our pockets, cognitive appendages that extend our intelligence and our mind and our cognition beyond its quotidian boundaries, right? We use these tools to reach out to one another, to empower one another. In fact, the United Nations 2010 development study found that the cell phone was one of the greatest inventions in history to pull people out of poverty, right? So we create these tools, we overcome problems, we overcome boundaries. But what happens when these tools continue to dematerialize? What happens when these tools enter our bodies and brains? What happens when the world of everyday objects gets sensors installed into it as well? People talk about the internet of things. People talk about basically cognitizing the world the same way we electrified it with electricity. Computation, intelligence, mind is just going to be everywhere so that the normal distinctions between self and world will dissolve. The internet of things is the internet of everything, which means intelligence everywhere, cognition everywhere, right? Intelligence turned inside out, mind turned inside out, right? And all of a sudden casting its cognitive spider webs all over the reality that surrounds us so that we start to live in our own minds. Just like architecture has intention embedded in its form, now mind and intention will be ever present. It will be everywhere. We will have distributed ourselves all over this planet, all over this globe. And as Ray Kurzweil says, it's only the beginning for our ability to create virtual models in our heads, our ability to create flying machines in the sky that further extend our cognitive scaffolding, means that in combination with our opposable thumbs, it was sufficient to usher in this secondary world known as technology, and this journey will continue until the universe is at our fingertips. We spilled over out of our minds. This is our triumph. This is what it means to be human.